Hey guys, Tyler here, bringing you a tutorial video on how to deal with the Rero Rainbow Rush on every single map in Bloom's TD Battles. Note that this is a video more geared towards newer players, as pros probably got this down already, but who knows, you may learn something from this video. In this video, I will tackle all the maps on the computer version of Bloom's TD Battles. While this may work for the mobile version, it may not work as well, and I definitely will not be including all the maps on mobile. The first map we have here is Temple, which is actually a pretty simple one because generally you go farms on the map and you can use the farms to sell for a 4-2 bomb tower along with a bunch of 3-0 bomb towers just for extra cleanup. This should defeat any size Reaver Ram Rush. You also might want a 3-2 Ninja just to help out against Camels as well, uh, as same as the Mortar. The next map we have here is Park, where you do a similar strategy to Temple, however this one involves getting a Ring of Fire on the... Uh, first bend that you can to maximize its popping power, then spamming 3-0 bomb towers if you realize they start to leak. It should be noted that the rainbow rushes in these videos are set up, so they'll, they'll be much larger than any rainbow rush you see in the wild. So if this strategy works, it'll work for you, guaranteed. On Yin Yang, I did a strategy where I put a ring of fire near the beginning of the track and just put a bunch of 0-0 monkey aces near the back to help clean up. Uh, those would be in place of the bomb towers for some reason, you don't have bomb in your loadout or chose not to put it there, this would be a nice alternative. Also, you should know that all these strategies that are being shown will probably work map to map. Some of them are map specific, but we'll get those later. But if you see a strategy like Ring of Fire, with Aces, or Bombs, generally they'll work on most maps, not just the one I'm showing it on. On cards, I use a strategy that shows off a little bit of micro. That is, selling and rebuying the Blade Maelstrom ability. Cards is one of those maps where if you place a bit Blade Maelstrom in the center, it will hit lots and lots of balloons. So you can use that wisely there. The Blade Maelstrom pop most of the balloons, and the bomb and mortar should clean up the rest. Nope, this is generally not how you use Blade Maelstrom. Blade Maelstrom is just a general like last resort. Sell everything and buy it if you don't think you're going to pop all the balloons. I wouldn't using it use it uh, to primarily stop a rush. On a rally here, I'm doing something totally different. This is this is just me having a bit of fun because this is a very easy map. All the previous strategies work, work on this map, but I decided to mix it up by using the super funky man cob with the juggernaut sped up. For those who don't now know how to use the juggernaut trick, don't worry, it's not a hack. Uh, there's just the better, there's just the glitch in battles that allows you to do this with the juggernaut. I show you how to do that in the camel leads video if you haven't seen it before. Not going to go into that now, but yes, that is a viable way to do it if you have a lot of money. And Rally is one of those maps where you can just get tons and tons of money for. Uh, I guess not all these strategies will be serious. Bluetonia Mines is another easy map, so I decided to use a ton of Glaive Ricochets to just defeat this Rainbow Ray Garage. Turns out that these are still pretty viable despite being nerfed in the past. And also, this was recorded when they costed more than they do now, so Glaive Ricochets may be an even better option. Of course, I still have my Mortar and Bionic Boomer as supporting towers because those all work really well. But it turns out you only need two Glaive Ricochets and a Bionic Boomer. For Hydro Dam, I dug up one of my older strategies because to this day, this is the safest against Rainbow Rushes you can be on this map. All it takes is two uh, Cluster Bombs, a Glaive Ricochet, and then some support from a Dartling Gun and a Mortar. You should be able to get lots of money through income with this, with this map, so it won't be too hard to afford overall. On Pyramid Steps, I decided to use one of those weird strategies that doesn't look like it should work, but really does. This is a strategy you want to use if you feel like being extremely greedy and not spending much money at all, saving a bunch for income, and then barely affording a defense for the rush. It turns out this works really well, so what you need is the Mortar with Camo Detection and Bernie stuff, a few 0-0 Ninjas on Strong to pop the Blacks, uh, some Cluster Bombs to pop overall balloons, and some ice towers near the end, just for some stalling. Pumpkin Patch is another one of those long maps where it's easy to get income, so I decided to use a crap ton of monkey aces this time. Uh, unlike Yin Yang, there's no Ring of Fire, this is literally just monkey aces, and because it's such a long map, these darts will do a lot of work on the massive amounts of balloons. For Battle Park, I decided to be a boring little boy, aww, and just went for one of the more uh, economically efficient strategies just because I knew that the spelling police against me would send a massive Rigor Rainbow Rush, so I just kind of had to prepare myself. Notice I keep buying these 0-0 Ninjas while the rush is going on. 
they, are, they aren't necessary, it's just more for extra safety. Because if you know someone's sending a huge rainbow rush against you, they have no money left. And if you defend the rush, you basically win. So don't lose to the rush. On Ice Flow, you can get away with a similar strategy Battle Park that is just a bunch of uh, cluster bombs and grape shot boats. Note that the grape shot boat should be on strong so they can focus down the zebras and blacks just so the bombs can clean up the rest. And that is all. For Yellow Dick Road, I wanted to show off the true power of the Dartling instead of doing some normal strategy, so I just went with a single 2-3 Dartling gun. Note the bomb here is actually unnecessary. The bombs from the Dartling are enough to pop the balloons, you just need them focusing in a good corner. This will work for most other maps, but it is expensive, so that's why it's not that serious. Note that a 1-3 Dartling will not work, it does need to be 2-3, otherwise the balloons will just fly right on through. On the Swamp map, I decided to use a strategy similar to Balloon Tell Me of Mines, just because Glaive Ricochets are absolutely amazing on this map. You will, again, only really need two Glaive Ricochets to get it with this. Even though I show three, you only need two. If you want to defend the Ram Rigor Rainbow Rush on Mondrian, you are probably going to need a Ring of Fire. If you try to defend this with just bombs and ninjas, you may get lucky, but it's not reliable, especially against larger rushes. Note, you will probably still leak some lives from AI balloons on the upper path during this rush, and that is okay as long as you don't have two lives. If that's the case, then play it safe. Get a lot more defense on the top. I believe this map is called Battle River, and it's a very easy map, so I decided to have a little fun, get, get some farms and sell them all for a big one mortar. This thing is really cool, like it'll just destroy Rigor Rainbow Rushes on the spot. I think it does decent against ceramics too, so if you manage to get this thing up by round 13, you'll be set for a long time. On Zen Garden, we're back to the old Ring of Fire and Bomb Tower strategies. Something you should know though, is that you're going to want your mortar aiming near the top of this screen where the rain balloons come in so you don't get uh, overrun by camos. And you're going to want your ring of fire as close to the AI path as possible. That way the flame arc can pop more balloons. And then you can just buy a few more ninjas if they send camos. Usually that's a safe bet. On Volcano you will be definitely safe with a similar strategy as Zen Garden. I shall also just let you guys know right now that the ring of fire spot I chose is terrible. You want to move it maybe half an inch up. So it's level with the center of the pool, but still on that side of the path. Usually that should be good enough. Also, these are just playing it safe. If you're in a public match, you probably don't even need the bomb images. Water Hazard is another map where you can just use the power of the Blade Maelstrom to your advantage. It's a real easy map where you just place Blade Maelstrom in the center, and that will hit lots and lots and lots of balloons. Something you can use it to your advantage is just hide the Blade Maelstrom until they actually send the rush. Because that way, they'll see your defense and goes, oh, he has like nothing. So I can just take him down with a rush, and then BAM! You whip out the Blade Maelstrom and kill their family. Indoor Pools is probably the hardest map in the game. So I would recommend either being overly safe or just rushing them first. You need a Ring of Fire in that spot and a bunch of boats. Some on strong and some on first. The ones closer to the left will be on strong. A game is another difficult map, even when you go Ring of Fire, because there's no really good curves for the Ring of Fire, so it'll definitely struggle against larger rushes. This way I have a Juggernaut and a Spike Pult helping out, and just microing the mortar just to catch some leaks, and generally that's good enough. Ink Lots is another very difficult map, so I'm going to do a totally different strategy here. Instead of actually defending the rush, something else you could do is sell and rebuy the Ice Tower ability to stall all balloons on the screen while you counter rush the opponent. It doesn't defend the rush, but it will probably win for sure if your opponent sends it all out to rush. On Snowy Castle, I decided to stick with the old Ring of Fire strategy. I know it's kind of lame, but it's a goodie and it's definitely the most cost effective. Over on this map, it definitely does struggle against larger rushes. That's why all the ninja monkeys are there. Otherwise, you could sell everything for a Blade Maelstrom just to defend everything, because Snowy Castle's a great map for that. Or another Mortar Tower. Basically, you just need to kind of keep buying things as money keeps in, and you'll generally be alright. So, that is about it. These are all the maps on Bloomsteed Battle's computer version, and I hope you possibly learned something from this. Uh, one last note is that the placement for all these towers is 
actually pretty important. If you're going to try some of the strategies in these videos, I would recommend starting with the tower placements that I have in there in, in, that are used and maybe developing your own if you want to. Like you're going to have to try it out and see if it's comparable. Otherwise, this works just fine. Um, any last things? I can't quite think of anything else. Oh yeah, just leave a comment if you're confused about any tower upgrade or any specific small things that might be confusing. And yeah, try not to be an asshole in the comment section. I, I, I hope this understood, but some people don't seem to get that. <laughs> uh, it's mainly not my subscribers though. Most of you guys are nice. So thanks you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, let me know if you want a mobile version of this because mobile is entirely different from flash mode battles. I just realized that when I was playing quick battles, a lot of people do not know how to defend the Reaper Rainbow Rush. So I'm hoping this will help them out and create more interesting games. Peace out.